All right, we want to welcome uh, to our studio uh, Alicia Thompson is the marketing director of the Museum of the Rockies and uh, pa- Patrick uh, Ryan, Rain, Ryan, Ryan, Ryan. Okay, I'm going to get it in a minute. Uh, is the uh, croc caretaker uh, from the uh, Clyde Peelings uh, reptile land. So we're going to be chatting with both of you guys. So Alicia, let's start with you. Uh, give us a little maybe for somebody out there that might be new to bozeman that never heard of the museum of the rockies or what it is or what it does so let's uh, chat about that for a second fantastic good morning everyone um museum of the rockies is a world-renowned museum located here in bozeman we have a variety of exhibition halls for you to explore from the siebel dinosaur complex to the poe regional history farm our uh, Welcome to Yellowstone Country Gallery. We have an incredible Martin Children's Discovery Center where you can explore the sights and smells and sounds of Yellowstone as children. As well as during the summer season, we have a circa 1890s living history farm with the Tinsley House. So we have an array of exhibits of education, of, excuse me, of exhibits for you to discover and learn about regional history and paleontology from in and around Montana as well as we have the opportunity a couple times a year to bring changing exhibitions into the museum, like we currently have Crocs, Ancient Predators in a Modern World. Uh, I know uh, uh, we have Eric Loeb in from the Planetarium Mm -hmm. from time to time, and uh, he is always fun. And uh, Nico Yunes is working on a thing with uh, him, I guess, in there. So you guys have a lot going on uh, there. It is very exciting. Always something new every day, as well as lectures and and educational programming for Mm -hmm. children. How do they find you? You know, you, that, uh, you know, it is really funny. I had a wonderful job before this and opted to get off the road and stop traveling. So uh-huh. I feel very blessed. Um, I've been there nine months now. So All I feel right. very so, blessed uh, to be at the museum. The new, in the, new in the position. So yeah. mm-hmm. uh, how are you liking it? So I'm loving it. Yeah. Every day is new. I mean, my first, uh, second week on the job, I got to, you know, look at a tray of T-Rex uh, teeth. Like, who, who, gets who, looks, to do who that? gets to do that? Right, yeah. exactly. And just um, Friday leaving work, I walked upstairs and got to see that six foot long West African dwarf crocktail practically staring at me through the glass. And I'm like, all right, this job is great. Pinch me. <laughs> so uh, we welcome everybody to come experience yeah. um, Museum of the Rock. What do you have coming up for the summer besides, I know the Croc Museum is going to be here, the planetarium, things are going on. Absolutely. So do you have other things uh, in the hopper? You know, really, um, well, the Living History Farm opens midsummer, and okay. that is very exciting for people to come and experience an eight, working 1890s um farm so, yeah how it was how it was done uh, before all the it uh, is. mechanisms we've got now that uh, yeah. it sure is and normally our changing exhibits would change again for the summer but we actually have croc as our summer exhibit through september okay so they're gonna be here for a while they're gonna be here for a while absolutely all right we got to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to find out all about crocodiles, what they eat, and uh, how not to be attacked by them like the kid in Australia was. <laughs> Absolutely. So, all right. We'll be right back with more right after this. 16 minutes after the hour, Tuesday, uh, March 21st, uh, we've got uh, Alicia Thompson's, the marketing director of the Museum of the Rockies, and uh, Patrick Ryan, uh, Croc's caretaker from uh, Clyde Peeling's Reptile Land. So, uh, uh, Patrick, let's get you in here. Uh, uh, you travel with the uh, with the exhibit and uh, take care of the crocs and uh, what uh, what all do you do to take care of a croc these days? Yeah, um, so what I do is I go in every morning uh, before the museum opens and I have to go through and do all the cleaning and maintenance of the exhibit. So that's going and cleaning out their water, anything like that, uh, checking temperature and water quality to make sure that the exhibits themselves are in proper working condition, make sure that they're in a good habitat that's good for those animals, as well as do things like feedings. I feed them twice a week, actually. They don't eat quite as much as people would think. Um, And I'll generally feed them things like rodents and fish. Uh, Basically, I have a big freezer like you would in your house, but instead of having like delicious chicken breasts and sausage, I have rats and fish and stuff frozen that i uh, thaw out right. and can give them to them and feed uh and make sure to feed them so everybody's at a healthy and happy weight what's uh what would be the uh, poundage i guess uh, per day or, or per feeding i guess per croc uh, um it varies on mm. their size basically we want to give them something size appropriate so for some of our larger crocs like the west african dwarf crocodile he's about six feet long he's the largest we have on exhibit he actually gets fed a large rat. So you can think of something like 
like a sandwich size, if we can just okay. kind of describe that. Right. <laughs> and uh, he also will get like things like a fish fillet, like a tilapia fish fillet. Uh, that's a little bit leaner, doesn't have quite as much fat on it. Right. So. Yeah, like I say, they, they don't get a lot of exercise. It's not like they're hunting in the wild or anything. So I guess you've got a, you got a metabolism, weight issue and things like yeah, that yeah, that you got to watch. Just like with the person, you know, you want to, if you eat too much junk food, you can put on weight. It's not healthy. So with our animals, we, we always monitor their size and everything like that. And the, the diet that we give them is, is based on keeping them at a healthy weight. And so it's just kind of monitoring that, that we're not getting too much or too little. As far as the exhibit, I, I know they're, they're behind glass. So, uh, you know, the, I guess people looking are not going to be, <laughs> your, your child's not going to fall in and uh, be eaten or whatever. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, uh, what are the what are some of the how big are they? How many per uh, container? And uh, um, uh, we actually have four species uh, on display. We have the West African dwarf crocodile. We have a Siamese crocodile. Then we have three slender snout crocodiles, and actually six uh, juvenile American alligators that are only about four months old. Now, there's a difference between the two. A lot of people, uh, we we both know crocodiles and alligators are different. Uh, different but certainly look alike but uh what's uh what's the uh one telling difference between the two yeah um so uh looking at them there are a few different ways to tell them apart um one of the easiest ways is the shape of their head an alligator is going to have a more broad u-shaped snout where crocodiles tend to have a more narrow v-shaped snout you can also tell by looking at their teeth when a crocodile closes its jaws you can very clearly see its bottom teeth uh, especially the fourth bottom tooth sticks out really prominently. Alligators, on the other hand, when they close their teeth, uh, you can't see the bottom teeth at all. Um, there's also, uh, if you look on the inside of their mouth, crocodiles actually have salt glands, which means they can go into salt water and brackish water and actually process that extra salt out where alligators don't. So they actually are limited to living just in fresh water. So we do occasionally see crocodiles uh, migrating from place to place or maybe where somebody brought them in and turned them loose somewhere. And uh, Well, for example, in the Everglades, obviously, they're living, uh, living yeah, there um, in so, salt water and some uh, fresh water. Yes, yeah, so the, the like American alligators are naturally found down there. Um, the, a big issue with their having with, with uh, people introducing species were the Burmese pythons down in the Everglades yeah. that they were able to take hold. So we always say anybody is, if you do have a pet or any animal, you don't want to release them into the wild because they're always a risk. It could, it could mess with the natural ecology of right. those locations. Yeah. So you always want to be very, very careful with that. We got to take another quick break. Uh, we're talking with uh, Patrick Ryan, the croc uh, caretaker from uh, Clyde uh, Peeling's Reptile Land. And we want to get back to uh, what that is when we come back. And uh, Alicia Thompson's marketing director, Museum of the Rockies. So we'll uh, continue this right after this. All right, 24 minutes after the hour of uh, 7 a.m. It's Tuesday, March 21st, uh, 2017. Tommy Galoff, your Marty Mayor in the house. We're talking with uh, Patrick uh, Ryan, uh, the Crocs caretaker from Clyde uh, Peeling's Reptile Land. And they are out at the Museum of the Rockies right now. And we've got Alicia Thompson, uh, marketing director, also Museum of the Rockies. So, uh, uh, Patrick, tell us a little bit about the uh, Clyde Peeling's Reptile Land, because we were, we were talking off air that you, you had a lot of stuff besides just crocodiles. So what's uh, going on there? Yeah, so um, Clyde Peeling's Reptile Land is a small AZA-accredited zoo, which is the Association of Zoos and Aquariums. Uh, and that's a real feather in our cap that means we abide by some of the highest levels of care for our animals. And we're a reptile-specific zoo, so we specialize in uh, some animals that a lot of other zoos don't have. We have a number of large constrictors, things like reticulated pythons and anacondas. We also have a very large display of venomous snakes as well, things like king cobras, green mambas, uh, rattlesnakes, uh, venomous from pretty much all around the world, as well as uh, large crocodilians. So we have uh, two adult American alligators at our zoo as well as um, some salt or some juvenile saltwater crocodiles and uh, a number of different tortoise species as well. We have uh, two adult giant Aldabra tortoises who are about 340 pounds each. Wow. Mm-hmm. As well as uh, one of our more recent additions is we actually do have a breeding pair of Komodo dragons on display now as well. So oh. you've got a little bit of all of it. I've heard Australia is uh, what the uh, place where the most poisonous snakes, uh, which surprised me since it's an island, how they get there? <laughs> I wonder. 
Um, yeah, the, uh, Australia has a lot of, of venomous stuff, um, you know, insects, snakes, uh, um, some large crocodilians as well, like things like saltwaters. Uh, so yeah, they have a, a pretty ama- amazing diversity of animals down there. It's um, uh, definitely a pretty harsh environment, so you see a lot of, a lot of uh, survivability down there. <laughs> Yeah, I I would uh, I've read some about it, but uh, yeah, it's a, a yeah you you don't want to go out in the outback too much. <laughs> yeah, I de- definitely you want to you want to err on the side of caution. Use use a lot of common sense when you're going around there. Uh, we always say a big thing is you know look before you leap. If you're going to step over a fallen log or a rock, there's likely a, a snake hiding under there, either from the heat of the day or from you. You want to be careful I was about. Say, make yeah yeah watch your step <laughs> yeah. so to speak so. So uh, the exhibit's going to be here till September, you said. Right through September 10th, okay. yes. Uh, are the animals rotated, uh, or they, do they stay here th- that whole time? Uh, yeah, okay. uh, the animals stay there the entire time. Okay. Um, they're exhibit animals, so they're used to this. Used they're, to the, yeah, and the ex- they are. Yeah. Yep, and the exhibits are, are made specifically for them, so it's, it's a great environment for them to be in anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, so they'll stay the entire time, and then uh, once the exhibit closes, they'll come back to our zoo, they'll get some time off basically they'll be off display where they just get fed they don't have to deal with people at all uh, until it's booked again and it'll get they'll get sent back out you were talking about uh taking care of the water temperature and uh obviously i guess there's waste and uh, you know it's got the water's got to be changed from time to time how uh do you move them to another place while you do that or do you just wander in there and start dipping the water out or what do you yeah, do? Yeah, um, so actually we have a uh, really large scale filtration. Um, okay. Our big exhibits have over 400 gallons of water in them. And so they're constantly being filtered. We have large filtration system that filters the water and cycles it. So what I'll do is I'll uh, once or twice a week, depending at need, I'll go in and I'll clean all of the filters out and we test the water. We actually use um, what are called six-in-one test strips where I can test things like the pH, Mm -hmm. the nitrates, the nitrites, the hardness, uh, chlorine, alkalinity, all of these different things to make sure that they're in a proper amount for them. And uh, to do the water change, we have big reservoirs. So I can actually use like a sump pump, drain it from the outside of the exit without having to go in, drain all the water out, fill it back up. And that way I don't really even have to bother with the crocodiles while I'm working, uh, doing that sort of stuff. Okay. Do you run into, uh, obviously this exhibit travels around the country. Do you run into local water problems like Flint, Michigan or places like that? Um, Is there a, I mean, do, do you have to kind of watch a certain water quality where you are, uh, depending on the city? Yeah. Um, depending where we are, there's always different challenges. Um, so far here, we've had uh, fairly basic water. Um, so I've had to add things like acid buffer into it, which lowers the pH down yeah. closer to seven. Um, we've had some places where it's the opposite. It's very acidic water. So we have to raise that back up. Um, and we do have things like a water softener that helps pull out a lot of the, the stuff out of the water. That's not good for them. Mm-hmm. So it's just monitoring it and we can use different processes to kind of clean the water if we need to we're out of time guys it went so fast yeah thank so, you for having us here yeah today. well we're yeah, happy to be here fun. yeah alicia thompson marketing director museum of the rockies and of course we're talking about the croc exhibit everybody should go out and see uh patrick uh, ryan the uh, crocs caretaker from the clyde uh, uh peelings reptile land and uh, we appreciate you guys taking the time coming in here nice and early and uh giving us the uh, lowdown on that so uh, we hope everybody will go out and see the exhibit and uh, enjoy it and uh, and uh, we appreciate uh, you bringing it in alicia and uh, for uh, patrick to uh, uh, all the hard work it takes uh, i can't even I, I didn't even get to ask you how you transport everything and around but uh, <laughs> oh, that's, that's a whole nother uh, whole nother thing say, as that's well a, that's a whole nother show <laughs> yeah, so maybe we'll, maybe we'll have you back uh, we'll talk more about this since you're going to be here till september so uh, all right well thanks guys for Thank coming you. in we appreciate yeah, it thanks. all right we got to do the fox news here at the bottom of the hour and